Hey, I'm Brandon Stiles, and today I want to show you how you can rank one of your website pages number one on Google, or at least on the first page. Now, why is that important? Well, there are two ways you can bring traffic, aka people, to your website. Remember, we want to think of them as people. There are two ways. You can either get them to go there for free, or you can pay for them to go there using Facebook ads, Google ads, sponsorships, things like that. So there are lots of paid tactics but today we're going to be focusing on a free tactic, specifically ranking in page one of Google. We're using a strategy called content marketing to try and bring people to our website, give them some valuable information, and ideally get them on some sort of marketing list so that we can follow up with them and see if our solution that our business provides would be good for them and turn them ideally into a client. The best thing about this is that it's free to do. Really, it only costs your time. Now, it can take a lot of time, but I'm going to show you today how you can pretty quickly churn out content and reach out to relevant people to get backlinks to that content in order to rank number one, or at least on the couple first results of Google. Before we dive in, let's talk about the most common problem that I see. The most common problem is not that businesses like yours uh, don't create content, they create a lot of content. The problem is they're creating content that people aren't searching for. Can you imagine if you spent like 10, 15 hours creating an article or a video about something that no one was looking for at all? So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the content we're creating is being searched. I'm gonna show you how to do that too, but that's the number one rule before you create any content, make sure it's something that people are looking for. Don't guess, get empirical evidence. So before we dive in, let's take a look at the tools we're going to be using today to get to page one of Google. So the first tool I'm using is a tool called Mangles, and these are SEO tools to help you speed up your SEO process. Click on the tools over here and you can see that there are actually five tools in one built into this program. They've got a keyword research, keyword finder, they have a way to analyze the pages of the Google search results. They have rank tracking, backlink analysis, and metrics and insights. So if you wanted to check out the metrics of a certain competitor or just a different site altogether, you can use Site Profiler. This just went through a really cool revamp and I love this. I've used a lot of SEO and keyword research tools. This one's my favorite by far. If you look up here, it also comes with the little Chrome extension. If you're using Chrome, that will help you break down a lot easier the page and you can get there quicker if you're ever on a random page, click there. The next tool we're using is a Chrome extension. It's called Keywords Everywhere. This is totally free. And what this does is it adds a little number counter to the end of any search terms on the Google results page. So for example, if I go to Google and I type in website design, then keywords everywhere is going to add this next to it. So website design gets searched about 165,000 times a month. Keep in mind these are estimates, they're not totally exact, but at least they're gonna get you in the ballpark. If 165,000 people per month are looking for website design, at least you know people are searching for this, so you can add this to your potential content list. But if you scroll down, here's where it's really cool. Look over here. You can see related search terms that show you about how many times they're getting searched a month as well, as well as the relative competition for those words. The higher the number, the harder it is to, going to be to rank number one, which is right here by Squarespace in this case. Finally, scroll down to the bottom, and Keywords Everywhere also adds estimates for number of searches per month for related terms too. So this is a great way to get alternate content ideas if you find one that you like, but it's just too competitive. So Keywords Everywhere is a second tool. The final tool we're using for today is gonna be called Persist IQ. This is how you can send personalized emails really quick. It's kind of like a mail merch thing. They have a free trial so you can try it out as well. And this is what we're going to be using to reach out to people in order to try and generate some backlinks. I'm gonna show you how to do that too. So those are the tools we are going to be using today. Again, they all have free trials so you can try this out. But this is how we're going to try and rank number one on Google. So let's dive in and see how to do that. So here I am on Mangles. The first thing I want to do is gauge my site's domain authority. This is a metric put together by Moz that basically says how authoritative is your website. Because think about this, Google was put together by academics and it kind of copies the academic paper methodology, right? If 100 people are like, if you want to learn more about XYZ topic, go check out this monumental paper 
paper, that paper is going to be elevated in status. Google's the exact same way. The more other sites link to your piece of content, your post, the more Google's gonna say, that's probably a trustworthy, helpful piece of content, so they're going to rank it higher. Now that's just one piece of the puzzle, but it's a pretty important piece. So the first thing I want to do is see how trustworthy and how authoritative my website is. So we're gonna go up to SEO tools, we're going to do a site profiler and we're just going to enter in our site. So let's say if I wanted to enter in, let's just take this example, tesla.com. Tesla has a domain authority of 88. So the overall domain, tesla.com and all the pages on it ranks 88 out of 100, which is really high. It means it's really authoritative, really trustworthy. Page authority is 60. The page authority is just the single page you're looking at. In this case, it's the home page, and it has an authority of 60, which is still very high. So that tells me a few things. If my website ranks lower than this, then Tesla's automatically gonna have a head start when it comes to ranking a certain piece of content. If my website is higher than Tesla's is, which would be an 88, so if mine's a 92, 93, et cetera, then I'm going to also, in this case, have a little head start. If you wanna learn a little bit more about what this ranking means, you can hover over this question mark and it will tell you a little bit more about it. So this is the first thing you wanna do. You wanna establish a website baseline. Now when you find that number, the domain authority number, remember, write it down somewhere. If it's a 26, write it down. 50, write it down. The method we're gonna to do today will also ideally be bringing that up too. So if it's low, don't sweat it. It just takes time and patience and, and hard work basically to get it up. So we've got our domain authority. The next thing we need to do is find the keywords or key phrases we want to build our content around. We want to create a piece of content around. So let's do that right now. So I'm gonna go up here and I am going to jump into the keyword finder tool. This is honestly where I spend a lot of my time. I got this tool from Miles Beckler and a lot of the strategies in this video today from Miles Beckler, he's a really great digital marketer. Check his YouTube channel out if you can. So here we are back at Mangles' KW Finder, Keyword Finder, and I'm just gonna enter in the keyword phrase I wanna try and create a piece of content around. So let's say I own a niche coffee company and I want to rank for something about the AeroPress coffee maker. So I'm gonna type in AeroPress coffee and see what we get. All right, so we can see AeroPress coffee gets searched about 18,100 times a month. That's really good. It has a keyword difficulty ranking of 49, so that's high. It's, it's possible to get an article rank number one on here, but it's not super easy. And again, this is where you kinda wanna match that domain authority number that you got at the beginning. The closer your number is to this KD number, the easier usually it's going to be to rank. So here's what I usually do. I'll come over to the filter, and I'll enter in a minimum search volume, let's say it's 700, and I usually leave the max blank. Let's do a minimum keyword difficulty of two, and then let's keep the max at 35. So now it's going to show us numbers that we can compete with, right? So all of these are good. They're getting searched multiple thousand times a month, and they're not too hard to rank for. So one of these is probably gonna be something we create our content around. This is a little bit of a mix of art and science, but I'm gonna scroll down and see what we can find. Okay, so here's an AeroPress review. It's got 1,300 searches a month and it has a keyword difficulty of 21. Let's click on this and see what we get. All right, so here are the first page results of the search phrase AeroPress review. So the first result is a YouTube video. We've got one from coffeechronicler.com, Wirecutter, all this kind of stuff. Now, the thing that you want to try and avoid competing with over here are the bigger links, okay? So we're not counting YouTube for this one because just single videos are not gonna be as all-encompassing as a 3,000 word piece of content with pictures and videos. So we're not really worried about YouTube, but we're not trying to compete here with Amazon. We're not trying to compete with, that's kind of really the only one I see right here. If you saw like a walmart.com or a reddit.com, things like that, we're not competing with those. Usually that takes a lot of money and resources. Uh, we're just trying to find more independent publishers like looks like coffeechronicler.com would be one, uh, Joy, Joyride Coffee would be one, Seattle Coffee Gear, things like that. Ones that you probably haven't heard of, okay? Now what I wanna do is I want to open all of these and just see what their content looks like about an AeroPress review. So I am going to command click Coffee Chronicler and just open all these up in some new windows. I'm skipping Amazon. Let's go to this Latte Art Guide. 
what I want to do is just kind of get an overall view of what they're doing and, and why they ranked on the first page of Google for a term, AeroPress Review, that gets searched a lot. So let's see what they're doing. Here is the Coffee Chronicler. All right, the first thing I like to check over here is the word count. So I pull up this Mangles extension that comes with it and I go to on-page SEO and it's got 1175 words. So I'm just gonna say about 1100 words. And this is good, we want to average the word count of these results that we have up here because then we know about how many words Google is considering first page worthy here. So let's go over this real quick. So we've got an image here. We've got the review of the Arobi AeroPress as the main title, some text. It's got like a little infographic here. Some more text, pictures, subheaders. It's got a video here. Okay, so, you know, pretty common stuff. Let's go to the next one. Again, checking that word count right here. This is Wirecutter, which is a little bit more of a competitive website. We've got 2,400 words, okay? So now we've got, I'm gonna pull up my calculator. What was it, 1,100 words plus 2,400. So let's keep that. And again, just kind of blurring my eyes and seeing what this looks like. So we've got a big picture here. We have an Amazon link. We've got what is the AeroPress, so a little background on it, some more pictures. We've got some outbound links, right, to Alan Adler, the Chemex, pictures, more links. Not super long content. We're also looking at the tone, so the tone seems you know, pretty conversational. It's not like a doctoral dissertation. Here's a GIF, some pictures, and two videos now, and things like that, all right? So I'm gonna open up a Google Doc. And in the header, I'm going to type in our exact phrase, AeroPress Review. And then I usually like to add some sort of working title. So AeroPress Review, maybe for 2020. Okay, and that's gonna be my working title. Let's copy and paste that here. So what have we seen on these? We've seen a couple of images. We've seen at most a couple of videos. Conversational tone, GIF, Amazon box link. Let's see what else we've got in these other ones. Here's the third result. So kind of the same thing, right? Picture, it's got kind of some bullet points here, the good, the bad, so pros and cons. And that's it, this one's actually very short, maybe a thousand words if that. Let's look at the on-page SEO, right at 972. Let's look at the next one. This one is just, okay, here's the review. So there's a video, an overview, pros, cons, specs, Q&A. But that's kind of it. So it's not super fleshed out. And I wanna check on this one more time. Word count is 18,000, but a lot of those, it looks like, are comments and reviews. So really, I'm gonna say that's maybe, I don't know, a thousand words. Okay, so let's go over to our document. And first of all, let's add in these, plus a thousand, plus a thousand. All right, and divided by four. So we're probably gonna want about 1,300 to 2,000 words for our review to make it um, first page worthy, right? So I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to write down the criteria for this article we wanna create. So we wanna use images, we want to use some videos, conversational tone, GIFs, maybe a link box, of course, you wanna get maybe an affiliate commission. We also want to add in pros, cons, and we want it to be, let's go on the high side and say 1,800 to 2,500 words. Following this will give us a good chance starting off to rank on the first page of Google because we've already compared it to these five first page results. Okay, so we've picked out our phrase. We've kind of seen what we need to create our content and make it good, right? So we need to include this. So now I'm just gonna go out and create the content, okay? So this is a little bit of a tedious part. It's just writing your article. There are a lot of good resources out there about how to actually write articles, but remember, you just want to give value, okay? So if you were looking for a review, the ultimate AeroPress review, what would you expect to see? You would probably maybe expect to see some recipes. You might create an infographic on a taste guide, right? Whatever it is, you wanna create a piece of content that kind of you know blows the reader away. So I usually like to start with an outline. So with any article, you probably have an intro, you have an outro, and then in between, you'll have helpful sections. So maybe a section would be about the AeroPress. And under here, you could talk about maybe it's history, inventor. So again, this is kind of section one, here's two, 
Three, we might create a section about the specs on the AeroPress, like how big is it, how much does it weigh? Next, we might cover some recipes. Next, we might cover some techniques, like what makes the best cup of coffee. We might also cover some Amazon reviews. The next section might be pros and cons. And then maybe you have an outro right here. So if I know that this needs to be 2,000 words, we've got eight sections, so I'm just gonna kind of rough this out really quick. Each section is probably gonna be about 250 words. I'm going to change these all to heading twos because we want to kind of pre-structure it for on-page SEO optimization. Right here is our H1, our header one. These are our H2s. And then these right here, these little sub ones would be H3s, okay? So I've got the outline. Now what you have to do is write. You just have to basically fill this in. So I'm looking for at least 250 words here. You would just like start typing, ha ha ha. You would add an image. If you're looking for good images, I like to go to pexels.com. These are going to be royalty free pictures that you can use. So I might type in. And you're just looking for images that might fit in this article. You can also use images you took yourself. You're just kind of looking for stuff to spruce up your content and make it look good. And then you might even include your own. Maybe you have small videos. Videos are great on a post. Videos are going to get you ranked higher too because they're more interactive, right? They're visual, auditory, things like that. Remember, just focus on being helpful, continuing to ask, who would be reading this and what would it take for them to finish reading it and be like, man, that was really good. Better you do with that, Google's gonna rank you higher. Another thing you could always do is outsource this. If you've got more money than you've got time, you can go over to Fiverr. Uh, I would recommend Fiverr Pro. And then you can just type in content writing. And here are a bunch of people here. You can go off your budget, how many stars they have and you can get them to actually write this content for you. I've done this before with good results. Sometimes it takes a few iterations to find a writer that gels with your style. I find it very helpful to give people templates. So here's kind of the template that I expect go from here. And sometimes even giving them an outline will help that, that bridges the gap between their lack of information and your lack of time to write it. All right, so we have found our content topic. We have gotten the post created. Now we need to, of course, publish it and tell your friends about it, send it out to your mailing list. But another strategy we can do is get backlinks. And I'm gonna show you how this works. Backlinks are when other pages, web pages out there, other sites, reference your piece of content, reference in this case, your post. And the more sites that reference your post, then Google's like, hey, if all these people are saying it's good, it must be good, boop, 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 shoot it up to the top. So how do we do this? Well, we do what's called a backlink outreach campaign. Basically, we're reaching out to people saying, hey, this content is really good. It might be helpful to your readers. Can you link to it from your post? Now, you can do this in a very manual way, or you could use this tool, which is called Persist IQ, and it lets you send personal emails at bulk. It's not very much money. If you go over here to pricing, you get a 14 day free trial and for $40 a month, you get to send out a ton of emails. So basically it is a really nice mail merge. So this is how I set mine up when I'm doing backlink outreach. So here's one I created in a trial account on Persist IQ, and it is just to do it. You create this new campaign and you click blog outreach campaign. And here are the emails I've set up. So here's this first one right here. If no one replies in four days, I send a follow-up. I wait five days, send another follow-up, seven days, another follow-up, and then if no reply after that, so that's a total of 19 days or so, I add a no response tag to that contact, and then I make a note to try again in 90 days and see if then they would link back to the content. So let's take a look at this first email, help with your blog post. Now remember, your subject line is gonna be the most important thing here because it is the sentence that's going to determine whether your email even gets opened or not. So A, B, test this if you can. So it says, hey, first name, my name is Brandon. I was going through some content on the title of your article or the keyword phrase, whatever you're, you've picked here, and read your piece on it. Thanks for creating such great and informative content. All right, you're thanking them. Uh, I use your article as inspiration for my own piece on your keyword title. Would you mind taking a look? Here's a link, if so. So you're giving them the link, right? You're removing all barriers. You're making their work super easy on them. Hope it does your piece justice. Again, another compliment there. If you think it's also something that could help your readers and give them even more valuable info, I'd be honored to have you link out to it from your post. So again, putting a lot of you and your speaking to the person. No big deal if not, kind of removing the pressure there, 
but I know how much the company name has helped me, so I wanted to try and give back. Thanks for considering and hope you're well. P.S. If it's easier, I can send you the referral line for the post so you can just copy and paste. Again, making it super easy on them. It's really quick to the point. You're not going into a big story here about how your life was changed and saved and all that. You're just making a quick ask. Again, if no reply in four days, you are going to send a follow-up. Again, follow-up short and sweet. Basically kind of says the same thing. Again, if you want these templates, click the description below to go to my website where you can have these templates sent to you. So you can just copy and paste them into Persist IQ or whatever email system you're using. Again, we wait a week, we follow up again, it basically says the same thing. And then if they still haven't replied after about 16 days, we don't wanna annoy the person. It's totally okay to follow up again, but we wanna wait 60 to 90 days. I like to go three months, so 90 days. And then we can kind of start this over again. Maybe the person, has changed in that position. So maybe it's not the same gatekeeper, so you might have better luck. But this is pretty simple, it's what we're doing. And again, we're trying to get backlinks to our new piece of content. The final step in this, you've got these emails set up, how do you figure out who to send it to? Well, we're gonna go back over to Mangool's Keyword Finder tool. Here's where we searched. And I'm gonna look over here at these cert results and see which one has a lot of backlinks. You can tell by looking at this number right here. These are the number of other websites linking to this. So aeropress.com is getting linked to by 78,000 other websites. Stumptown Coffees, this page, if we hover over it, this is a brew guide to the Aeropress, is getting linked 105 times, so on and so forth. Bluebottlecoffee.com, the preparation guide for the Aeropress is getting linked 111 times. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to pick out one of these articles and see who's backlinking to this because it stands to reason that whoever is linking to an article about the Aeropress, their readers would probably be interested in a review of the Aeropress. So I'm just gonna look for one that, here's one, Prima Coffee, I'm gonna hover over it. This is about the equipment on the Arobi Aeropress. Okay, so I'm going to click these three buttons and show backlinks. This takes you to Mangles' link miner tool, and you can see the article has already been populated right here for us. And then here is a list of all the websites that are linking to this article. So a few things we wanna do to make sure that we're getting the best bang for our buck. We want to change this to do follow because no follow links don't give us any Google juice. We also want to eliminate over here RSS feeds because those do not give us a lot of Google juice either. So deselect that and leave these others. Now our list shows who we want to reach out to to get backlinks. These are essentially the people we're going to send that cold email campaign that we just created to. This is also one of the more manual processes of organically building on Google. You can of course outsource this on some place like Fiverr. You can go there and type in backlink outreach or backlink strategy and see who pops up or you can do it yourself. We're just trying to find the name of the author and the email address of that author. And you can see why this can take some time. Like if we click on this white part right here, we get a preview of the site, which helps us out a little bit, but we don't have an author name. So what I would probably do is I would open this up in a new tab, click over to it. And I'm going to be using this Hunter IO Chrome extension to see if there are any email addresses listed for this site. And it looks like there are a few, so Dan, at gramperbros.com. So I'm going to copy that and I am going to paste this in a Google Excel spreadsheet. So I've created this here, author first name. We want their email. We want the original article that we're trying to overtake. And that's where we're gonna start with. So in this case, the email is this and the guy's name is Dan. And the original article is right here. So you can see that this can be a little bit long, but it's worth it. If you get a number of backlinks from this, this can really quickly shoot you up the Google rankings. So I'm just going to go back and get some more. I'm gonna find articles that would fit with my review, and I'm just going to send them all the email address from the email campaign we just created. So real quick, I'm gonna speed this up and maybe get one or two more. Go back to LinkMiner, open this up. This is Shauna, so I'm going to click this one. This is a little bit of a newer article, so it might still be fresh on her mind. Hunter doesn't pick up any email addresses for this one, so I'm gonna to go to the next one. This looks like it's I Brew My Own Coffee by Brian and Brian. So I'm gonna open this up, see if I can find any email addresses. Hunter IO is not showing us any right now. 
scroll to the bottom. So this might be someone you could tweet. So there's Brian Shile. So you might want to tweet Brian. Or you could try and find, here's an email us. Copy in that. I'm going back to our Excel spreadsheet. I'm putting in Brian and then the email address. And of course, the there's no specific article. So I'm just going to leave that. Basically, you just fill this out and you can put as many as you want. Like I said, it's a little bit of a tedious process, but once you get these names, you're going to download as a CSV. You're going to come over to Persist IQ, click Campaign, then we're going to add prospects. And you can add prospects right here. Double check that the first name and the email are correct. Give the import a name and then your campaign will start sending very shortly. So that is the process for how you can create content that people want to read that has a chance to rank on the first result of Google or at least on the first page so you can take advantage of that free traffic. It just costs you your time or money if you outsource to Fiverr. Again, check the description below. I've got affiliate links to all the services we talked about today, Mangools and Persist IQ. So if you use them, uh, it just helps me out a little bit and uh, I would sure appreciate it. But again, check these out. And if you click to my website below, again in the description, I will send you the exact email copy for that Persist IQ follow-up chain. So again, click the link to my website below and it will take you to a page where you can sign up to download this Word, Word template that you can just pull in and reach out for backlinks. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe if this was helpful and let me know what you do for cold outreach. What's been successful for you? Talk to you soon. I'm Brandon Styles.